In this video we are going to see how I managed to transform this huge red splodge into something quite creative and how I was able to overcome some of these challenges. Today I want to share with you the beginnings of a new sketchbook that I am eager to work in. It is by Etcher Lab and it's the cold press perfect sketchbook in A4 size. My original intention for this video was to paint some nice landscapes or seascapes and see how the watercolour paper reacted to my paints. But as you'll see for the rest of the video, it's not really going to turn out like that. It says it is 100% cotton watercolour paper, 300 GSM. Let's open it up. Oh my goodness, the pages are beautifully thick. It's quite textured. I'm going to be really interested to see how this performs with my watercolour and mixed media. I wanted to catch up with a session from Emma Carlyle's Patreons. So I laid out all my materials and I read the description that Emma Carlyle had for this particular landscape. She said there were two huts next to a lake and in the background there was some hills and also some mountains. So it started off quite well. As I was drawing these two huts, which were red, I thought, how am I going to create that red? I wanted to try my Liquitex acrylic marker. And as I was trying to take off the lid, the whole thing completely fell apart all over my sketchbook my watercolour set, a favourite brush, all over my wooden floor. Inside there were little ball bearings and they rolled across the floor spreading red paint all the way into my office. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I've managed to clean up my watercolour palette as best I can. However, the page that I started looks like this. I think it would be a challenge to try and incorporate it, so I think I will do that. Also, also, I want to show you what I did with the red acrylic. I didn't want to waste it, so there are going to be a lot of sketchbook pages with red backgrounds. I just splodged it around using the um, kitchen roll. Um, so we're going to try and incorporate this into my sketchbook. I am going to try to incorporate this as best I can. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how. I only wanted these two little huts to be red, but um, this is gonna be a good challenge. Luckily, I could still see the faint pencil lines underneath, so I took my sepia Pentel brush pen and started with the roof. Because I had had this accident, I decided to look at the reference photos. I didn't want to go through with just working with descriptions. I knew I had to cover up that foreground, so I used another acrylic marker, which was uh, olive green. In the photo, there was a lot of foliage there, so I was able to take that green marker and mix it up with some of the ochre acrylic just to mix it up a bit. And I also spread some of that around in the hills in the distance so that it looked a bit more harmonious. You can see that red is already present in the lake area or what should be the lake. So I had to mix some of my watercolour with the white ink to try and cover it up, although you can still see a little bit of that. In case you're wondering what I used for this area here, it was the Liquitex Professional Acrylic Marker. This one is um, Hooker's Green and this one is Yellow Oxide. Oh, there we go. And what you do is give that a shake and then you press down on the, the nib here and it's a chisel tip, which means that I can move it around to get uh, different types of marks. I defined the areas of the lake a bit better and then moved on to the foreground area. It seemed like there was like a meadow with flowers there so I started applying a bit of white ink with yellow mixed into it just to give it a spring-like feel I suppose. The brush I was using is a flat one so that I could use the different edges of it to create different types of marks and textures. 
the roofs of these huts were really really dark so I went back in with my Pentel brush pen just to give them a little bit more definition and also the corrugated feel along the walls of those huts as well. Next up the mountains needed a little bit more treatment and this was mainly just watercolour this time and I really loved the way that they mingled on top of this 100% cotton watercolour paper. It can take a lot of water and the pigments really blend wonderfully on the surface and I love that extra drama that I was able to add to the sky. This is where I'm at. I've probably only got about a minute left. I don't think I've done too badly considering that I had such a dreadful accident to begin with. I do think it would help if I were to get some white gouache and just go over this red corner here because it's too distracting from the main image. As this was a new sketchbook, I had a real desire to see how it would turn out. And that curiosity led me to trying something new. Uh, my mindset is at a place where I'm able to embrace the possibility of making mistakes. I actually decided on using was the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White ink. I just think it's got a much better coverage. And the brush I used was the Pro Art White Nylon because it. I use this ink again to define the mountain so this is kind of like negative painting where I am painting out a little bit of the background so that the mountains show up a lot better against the sky. It's always a good idea to try and create a better contrast between two distinct areas by making one of them a lot lighter like the lake against the roof of this hut. I think given the humble origins of this first page of my new Etcher sketchbook, uh, the results have turned out quite remarkable. From this experience with the accidental red paint all over this sketchbook, I learnt the importance of staying calm and positive in the face of this unexpected challenge. And instead of this ruining my practice, I chose to persevere and find a way to rescue this page. So I think what I've come up with is a really unique solution that transformed the mistake into something really interesting. And being open to learning from mistakes is a key characteristic of any growth and development. It involves recognising errors are actually opportunities to learn and improve rather than a sign of incompetence or a failure. I decided to carry on with the Patreon session and this one was more like a harbour scene. It's not something that I've ever kind of tried to portray in a sketchbook before so I had a few tricky moments here. The red patches that you see on this page is actually me smearing some of that spilt red acrylic so that I didn't waste it. It was very random and I just had to go with it so maybe that's why that stone harbour wall seems so prominent. Rather than paint over it I just used line to depict the edges of the stones and that's kind of like my go-to whenever I'm in doubt just draw with watercolour and I'm not too keen on boats. I think they look okay. Uh, I'm a little bit better with houses and you can see the, the red reappears within those houses. I again use some of the white ink to create a little bit of dimension on the stonework, adding a bit of highlight here and there, and I think that helps to sort of knock back and break up that red. I really liked adding the blue, there's something about adding the sky that really sets off a piece and gives it a little bit more context. I almost wasn't going to add the cat because I didn't see it the first time that I looked at it but I'm glad I did because I think it balances out the foreground against the background and that was just extra information using the brush pen. I have to say my favourite part of the piece is this cat <laughs> with the row of pebbles along the edge of the water. I'm not totally convinced that I captured 
the the scene quite as it was the houses look quite nice i i'm not used to painting boats and seascapes that much or harbors let's say i did enjoy painting this sea wall but um there's something quite disjointed about this composition for me although this sea wall is quite dominating i do like the fact that the red echoes here in the houses and goes along there so it gives it kind of a slightly harmonious feel but uh, it's quite dominating even so i still learned an incredible amount from this time study and um, i think i need to paint a few more cats in the future compositions the next reference image was a lighthouse standing on some rocks and again I'm using the technique of drawing with watercolour which also saves an incredible amount of time. I'm just plotting in the, the main areas that I'm seeing. In some ways it's really great because I already had the red, I didn't have to worry about the, the colour of the rocks and this takes away some of the pressure and I was just left to fill in the most important details and I actually love that deep Payne's grey sea against that red lighthouse. I had been itching to try the turquoise acrylic marker and I was able to blend some of that in with watercolour in the sky there and it's a beautiful backdrop against that very bright red of the lighthouse adding a bit more definition to the edges. It wasn't a round lighthouse, it was more geometric, uh, using the white ink and going in again with the burgundy Pentel brush pen to add some of the details, like the, the windows there. And I just couldn't stop faffing with that sky, I just kept going over and over and over it. This was only a 10 minute study, so I feel like I've done a pretty good job considering. Here's the finished piece. It's pretty rough and ready up here. Uh, this is mainly watercolour as you saw, but I did add some of the uh, Liquitex acrylic marker in here as well. And it's blended beautifully. I also really like the, the hint of people just kind of blending in with the misty background. The red rocks, you know, they, they work okay. Uh, the echo the, the lighthouse which is fine oh, I think in real life they're kind of like a brown grey also I wanted to point out this area here I'll show you the um, the pen that I used for that it was the Pentel emerald green brush pen and it's uh, really really gorgeous and works beautifully in this landscape Although it wasn't the most auspicious start for my Etcher sketchbook, I am thrilled with the quality and how the art supplies are just going on here with so much ease. It's a lot rougher than what I'm used to, but I think it's suiting mixed media. So it would be really um, interesting to see how this performs with just uh, watercolour. Uh, I know some of this is just watercolour in the skies, but I think my next few pages I have to really look into just exploring in watercolour. Making a mess is actually an important part of the artistic process as it allows the artist to experiment, to take risks and to explore their creative impulses without the fear of making a mistake because what you saw really didn't turn out to be a mishap at all. And by giving ourselves permission to make that mess, an artist can break free from the constraints of perfectionism and allow yourself to really play and explore just like you saw me do here. And this can lead to lots of unexpected discoveries, especially when you're using mixed media like I was. I think for me there is now a deeper understanding of my own artistic preferences and the way I might like to use my materials. Making a mess allows an artist to overcome a series of creative blocks as it allows us to let go of preconceived notions of what is pretty or good and really just embrace the unknown. Embracing that messiness is part of what makes us artists. It allows us to be open to new possibilities and 
lots of different approaches. There is no one path that we are all going to tread. And this ultimately allows us to create a more dynamic and engaging works of art. Social media has become a dominant force in the art world and it does provide artists with a platform to showcase their work and also to connect with their audience. However, I feel it's really important to recognise that social media doesn't always provide an accurate representation of what goes on behind the scenes in the creative process. That's one of the reasons why I set up this YouTube channel, because many artists may present on social media a polished and curated image of their work, leaving out the messy and imperfect aspects. And I think this is really important to highlight, as then viewers are left with a rather skewed view of what takes place when an artist is creating. And to combat this, it's important to give a more authentic version of how sketchbook pieces are created. And this means sharing the ups and downs of the creative process involving those mistakes and the experimentation and all the revisions. And the finished piece is not really what I'm always wanting to present. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you could leave a thumbs up and a comment. Let me know what your biggest mishap was and how you might have overcome it. And also hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I look forward to reading them. Take care and stay amazing. Also wanted to let you know that I have actually recorded a few more videos of just me using plain watercolour in this Etcher sketchbook and that is going to be coming up real soon so watch out for that video.